But I take it then you support the, uh, the freedom-loving attempts of the uh, peaceful marchers in Alabama and these places. You don't get freedom peacefully. Freedom is never uh, safeguarded peacefully. Anyone who is depriving you of freedom isn't deserving of, an, of a peaceful approach. This is Malcolm X, a black nationalism activist during the era of the civil rights movement, showcasing his disagreement with Martin Luther King Jr.'s approach to the social ills of structural racism in America. He is the son of two black activists in their own right. Luis and Earl Little were members of UNIA and followers of Marcus Garvey, an activist born in Jamaica, recruited to come to the U.S. by Booker T. Washington. Marcus Garvey advocated for the total separation of the races, he once met with a Klan member believing the Klan to be part of a secret government running the United States of America. His work as an activist put him on the federal government's radar and he was arrested for mail fraud, being deported back to Jamaica. Malcolm was born in Omaha, Nebraska in 1925. To give context for the race relations of the time, the Ku Klux Klan's revival had been established just after the First World War and had grown to over 45,000 members in 1923 in Nebraska alone. Part of that revival came with D.W. Griffith's first hooded superhero movie, The Birth of a Nation, which shows the Ku Klux Klan as heroes preserving American values and a white supremacist order against unintelligent, aggressive white actors in blackface. The film was the first film screened in the White House by President Woodrow Wilson. At this time, black families were migrating in droves from the South. This is known as the Great Migration, where families moved from the South in hopes of escaping Jim Crow laws and lynching performed by the KKK. Not everyone was so lucky. In 1919 in Omaha, Nebraska, during the Red Summer, a series of racial riots throughout the year, Will Brown was lynched for a crime he did not commit. Six years later, the Little family was visited by the KKK while Earl Little was away. Terrorized, the family moved to Lansing, Michigan, where they lost their home in a fire, and Earl Little died at the streetcar tracks, which Malcolm blamed on the KKK his whole life. Lost without his father, and with his mother institutionalized shortly thereafter due to economic strains from losing Earl in the Great Depression, Malcolm moved to Boston and turned toward a life of crime until he was arrested, imprisoned, and found God through Islam. Hello, my name is Lucas. This is a bit of lit. I'm here to talk about... Les Payne's The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X, finished by his daughter, Tamara Payne, as he passed away two years before the book was published, which was last year. I'm trying to provide more context for each book that I read, which is why I have that long introduction. Uh, if you like that kind of thing, uh, please let me know, leave a comment, uh, like the video, subscribe, let other people know. And uh, I will continue uh, to work on adding more context to each book that I read. Um, the book is a biography on Malcolm X's life. And it is thoroughly researched and incredible and uh, really shocking in a lot of ways. Uh, it follows him from... Uh, Omaha, where he was born, and actually contextualizes uh, the what Omaha was like at the time, and what the Midwest in general was like, and the whole country. And uh, it, it is just shocking. Uh, it continues on, of course, from there through his life uh, after he moves to Michigan, and then later to Boston, where he starts a life of crime and is very reckless <laughs> throughout the whole time. Uh, and eventually he is caught and imprisoned and sent to jail. And during that time, he meets a mentor uh, that helps him un understand the need to educate himself and focus his mind and these kind of things. And um, he really reforms himself, not the prison himself. He does it himself. And changes his whole outlook and he joins the Nation of Islam as he finds Allah. I said God in the introduction by accident, uh, but he finds Allah through Islam and becomes very disciplined. Um, and what's really interesting is that though he did have a life of crime, like early on, there, there are three points I want to point out that are of great interest to me while I was reading it. Um, as a child, 
uh, his father had died. His mother was taking care of them as best as she could, as well as she could, uh, and struggling and not really able to because of finances and the Great Depression. His oldest brother was sending money, and him and another brother would go to the mailbox to find that money and take, take it for themselves. And I think of all the terrible things that he did as a young man, uh, this is easily the worst uh, because it led to his mother becoming institutionalized. <laughs> and uh, that, that was shocking for me. I mean, all the things he was doing after that were all so bad. Uh, and a little bit during that time, but that was like so cold. I couldn't even imagine it. When he is with the Nation of Islam, he is sent by Elijah Muhammad, the leader who claims to be a prophet, uh, which Malcolm believed um, until he had his breaking away. He had to speak with KKK members in a meeting because there was this belief that the KKK had full control of um, America and the Nation of Islam wanted separatism uh, in a similar way to the KKK. Not quite the same goals, absolutely, but um, a similar idea at the very least. And they wanted their own state uh, and to have their own politics and economics and this kind of thing and I thought uh, Elijah thought well, we can make a deal with these uh, white devils a uh, blue-eyed white devils and this was really uh, conflicting for Malcolm because he, his whole life he has believed that the KKK who terrorized him and his family out of Omaha mind you uh, had killed his father at the tracks nearby in Lansing, Michigan. And now he has to speak with them, and they're offering to be partners in a way and want information on Martin Luther King about where he is because they know that he comes and goes in this town that they're in. And this is a sort of reckoning. And what is really incredible uh, is that after this, of course, uh, he starts learning about some in, uh, Elijah Muhammad's human side, his infidelities, and, and this whole getting in bed with the devil kind of thing um, pushes away from the Nation of Islam, and uh, he goes on his Hajj, uh, his pilgrimage to Mecca, and he, his views on white people change because he, 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 um, he meets a lot of white Muslims that he shares food and drink and uh, accommodations with in brotherhood. And he realizes that it's really a cultural problem and he wants to... The third thing that I think is really shocking, I did know that thing about Mecca, but uh, I did not know that he was going to nascent African nations as they were uh, becoming their own countries after uh, years of colon horrible colonialism um, and breaking away finally. Uh, he was going to these new African leaders to try and push uh, charges through the United Nations against the United States for its treatment of uh, black people and I did not know that I, I did not know that was one of his goals at the end uh, and one of his sort of life's work that was cut too short um, a lot of these leaders were afraid to do that because they thought if we get involved in America's internal affairs they're gonna do the same thing and we are new and they are powerful um, so there was a lot of pushback against that idea, but then of course, you know, it goes through the rest of his life where he's assassinated for uh, revealing some truths that he should not have known. Um, it's an incredible book. He's an amazing figure in American history, uh, well worth reading about and learning more about. 
Uh, certainly my view of him and my understanding of uh, his politics was skewed and wrong. Uh, I'm better educated now. I was ignorant before. Uh, I can always continue to improve and I hope to do so uh, because this book was excellent, uh, enlightening, um, and is it's really a fantastic book. I recommend it to anyone, uh, especially if you're an American. And I would like to leave you with a clip that uh, shows uh, Malcolm X talking about this African project he had. Thank you. Goodbye. We feel that the problem, number one, of the black man in America is beyond America's ability to solve. It's a human problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. And as a human problem or a world problem, we feel that it should be taken out of the jurisdiction of the United States government and the United States courts and taken into the United Nations in the same manner that the problems of the black man in South Africa, Angola, and other parts of the world, and even the way they're trying to bring the problems of the Jews in Russia into the United Nations because of violation of human rights. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only we are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being.